I get angry at myself for even having pain. <laughs> oh, what a sad trick. You feel real to me, Samantha. Thank you, Theodora. That means a lot to me. Her is the first feature film written by acclaimed director Spike Jones, notorious for his partnership with Oscar-winning writer Charlie Kaufman for previous projects such as Being John Malkovich and Adaptation. Watching her is a strangely familiar experience, with the soundtrack, cinematography and acting providing an emotional depth to the film that is scarce in the industry today. Jones took what we know and developed it into a believable future. This is key to the film. While many films set in the future give an exact date at the start, Jones never tells us. It is an implied future that could be 10, 100 or a thousand years away. The world is, to all intents and purposes, the same. The technology is logical and not forced. It is how a future would logically be evolved from our present state. Jones does this to make the world the backdrop rather than the subject. What he really wants to explore is character, emotion. The setting facilitates rather than dictates this. So what does her truly explore? Her explores love as a concept and pulls at the boundaries of it. Plato famously argued for ultimate forms of everything that exist in this world. For Plato, there is an ultimate form of beauty, an idea that what is beautiful is objective. And that thesis is the fundamental assertion of the theory of forms, that justice, beauty and the like exist independently of and prior to all the just actions, just people, all the beautiful things, statues, objects, any that you can find, um, beauty and justice exist on their own and apart. That's the theory of forms. He believed that when we say you are beautiful, what we really mean is you are closer to the ultimate preconceived form of beauty that I possess the idea of than others. Jones challenges this. To him and to the film, beauty is fluid and in the eye of the beholder. Jones presents the case of Wittgenstein in this film. Look at Wittgenstein's famous picture. What do you see? A duck or a rabbit? This sums up his argument as he is simply saying that our difference of perspective means that beauty is completely relative. In the book Essays in Love by Alan de Botton, he discusses the Marxist theory of love. Woody Allen presents this in his film Annie Hall, and simplified, it is as follows. The, the other important joke for me is one that's uh, usually attributed to Groucho Marx, but I think it appears originally in Freud's wit and its relation to the unconscious. And it goes like this, I'm paraphrasing. Um, I would never want to belong to any club that would have someone like me for a member. That's the key joke of my adult life in terms of my relationships with women. To many in this modern world and in the implied future of Jones, this is how people feel. This is how Theodore feels. It is not just the world which has left him alone, but his own personality. There is a willingness to connect, but a resentment from himself that drives him away from others. He does not want to be part of anything where he is considered worthy enough. He doesn't see himself as worthy. And then I was thinking about the other things I've been feeling and I caught myself feeling proud of that, you know, proud of having my own feelings about the world, like the times I was worried about you, and things that hurt me, things I want. And then I had this terrible thought, like, are these feelings even real? Or are they just programming? And that idea really hurts. And then I get angry at myself for even having pain. <laughs> oh, what a sad trick. You feel
feel real to me, Samantha. There is an age-old question in philosophy, which is, does love give birth to beauty, or does beauty give birth to love? Alan de Botton simplifies this in his book, saying, do we love someone because they are beautiful, or are they beautiful because we love them? In Alan de Botton's book, he gives the example of someone with a gap in their two front teeth. Is that beautiful or not beautiful, or is it subjective? In this film, it is not the gap in the teeth, but the idea of personality being all, the idea of connectivity being all, and that being beautiful. Jones presents the case for a person being beautiful because you love them. Love is the bridge into beauty. Love is first. Love knows no bounds and isn't quantifiable. Above all, love is what makes us alive. The capacity to love is what makes Samantha alive. Her beauty is in the eye of the beholder and, importantly, is to be found after love, not before. Hello, I'm here. Hi. Hi. I'm Samantha. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, I will release a new film essay every week.